Hi, I'm Joe Connolly on How Small and Mid-Sized Businesses Grow, brought to you by Dime Community Bank. I know them there, and they're good, smart people to talk with at Dime Community. Our guest today is somebody on the front lines of business growth herself, because Laura Rothrock is the president of the Long Island City Queens Partnership and executive director of the Long Island City Business Improvement District. Neelai Caruso will join us with some questions, too. Laura, what are the top one or two trends that you're seeing among independent businesses right now in Long Island City? Thank you for having me. And hi, Joe. So the top trend that we're seeing right now in Long Island City is the we have a growing number of Asian-owned businesses here. We have the the fastest growing Asian population in the city, according to the 2020 census. And that's really been reflected in the local businesses here. So out of, in our business improvement district, we have 280 storefront businesses and 48 of those are Asian owned. And uh, 31 of the 48 have opened since 2020. Wow. Now, are there a growing number or a lot of large businesses around that are helping to fuel the growth of these businesses? Or is the growth coming from the increasing number of residents in Long Island City? Tell us what happens there. Yeah, so Long Island City is the most mixed use neighborhood in the city. And the reason why I say that is because we are very mixed use the way that people think of it traditionally and having office and retail and residential. But we also have a large industrial sector and manufacturing zone in here in Long Island City. So a lot of the foot traffic and the new businesses that are opening there, they are um for the residents that live in the community and also for a lot of the major employers. So in Long Island City, we have Bloomingdale's, Altice, Estee Lauder, Wild Corner Med Medicine, and of course, JetBlue Airlines, which is the only airlines that's headquartered in New York City. So a lot of those major employers, now that people are, we're, we're past the, the height of COVID and mostly past the pandemic, people are coming back to the office. So we are seeing an increase in foot traffic from both office workers and residents. And do those large businesses that you just mentioned have a retail locations in Long Island City or corporate offices or both? Yeah, so they're mostly corporate offices. Yeah. So um, like, for example, Bloomingdale's, Estee Lauder have co corporate offices here. Um, while Cor Cornell Medicine opened up uh, doctor's offices here. Um, and JetBlue has their corporate office here. Well, that should be great for the other businesses in Long Island City. Is, is that what you're saying? It sounds it. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So we have a lot of these major employers. And then we also have a, a life sciences hub as well. So um, which which brings people because, of course, with life sciences, you have to be physically in the lab. Um, so we have a lot of lab space here as well. And so a lot of workers are are coming to Long Island City for work. Here's our son of Queens, Neil A. Caruso, with some questions. Yeah, you know, it's funny, Joe and, and Laura, good to have you. You know, when I pass through, uh, you know, going into Manhattan or sometimes they do drive around Queens, I see a lot of, I see all these uprising Long Island City. It's been going on for some time during the pandemic. Um, what are, tell us about the small businesses, though, that are coming in and the types of industries they are. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the development that you're seeing is that um, they're, there are a number of new towers that are rising that are residential, but they most, for the most part, all have ground floor retail. So we have a um, hundred million, I'm sorry, not a hundred million, a million of, of square feet of existing retail now and about 318,000 square feet that are expected to be added by 2025. And that's from all the development that you're seeing. So a lot of those, uh, the, the ground floor retail will be filled by small businesses um, and retail businesses. And we have a we have a big food cluster here. So um, we're seeing a lot of, of restaurants um, and sort of fast casual food to accommodate the residential population and the office population. You know, it's interesting to see how retail and restaurants are doing pretty well in Queens. It's not the case in Manhattan. Why do you think that's so? Why are they why are they choosing Queens? 
Well, during COVID, actually, we the foot traffic in Long Island City went up. Um, whereas if you look at Manhattan and Midtown or Lower Manhattan, which is mostly an office district, of course, and, and a lot of tourist tra traffic traditionally in the height of COVID, obviously the foot traffic went down. And the reason why we have we had a spike in foot traffic in Long Island City is because of the mixed use nature of the neighborhood. So we have a lot of residents here. Um, so but with with a lot of people still in a hybrid uh, working environment. Some people, you know, will be home during the day and working from home and want to go out and get lunch. And then you also have the office crowd. So we have um, both of that here. And that's really what has helped the community be resilient. You know, L Long Island City is obviously much smaller than uh, Manhattan. But I, mean, I almost want to ask, is there still room to grow there? And I'm asking the development director the question, I understand, but is there an opposition to more growth than there has been now? We know what happened with Amazon. What's the, what's the mood and the talk uh, uh, of the residents of Long Island City? Yeah, there's, um, so there is opportunity for growth. There are some sites that are city owned that, um, that we're hearing might be RFP'd for future development. Um, there's also some land along the waterfront that um, could potentially be developed. Um, and as far as the mood, you know, Long Island City is huge. So it kind of really depends on who you talk to. <laughs> um, and I think another, something else to sort of look at is that we do have a really big, um, industrial zone right and so a lot of the industrial build we we have a lot of industrial activity yeah. so unlike some other cities or even neighborhoods where there's like this post-industrial economy that is uh, floundering we have a really um, thriving industrial community here so there's not there doesn't seem to be a lot of appetite to change that um, into you know housing or towers or anything like that so part of sort of like the the court square and um, kind of like the core of LIC's um, towers that that people are familiar with. That's kind of what people think of, which is more the mixed use residential office um, retail. But then we also have this whole industrial sector and there is opportunity for development. But um, but most of the industrial businesses are are still thriving, like I mentioned. And I'll tell you uh, one other thing uh, about uh Long Island City that I just noticed recently, Laura, I saw a news story saying that Long Island City is growing so fast that there's growing demand for pet grooming and veterinary services and businesses serving dogs. Yes. Yes. I, I shouldn't put it that way. <laughs> businesses whose customers are dogs. <laughs> and there's even a, a new one called uh, Lo uh, New Dog City or something like that, a business. Yeah. Uh, so we ha so Dog Island City is um, yes. a very clever business name here in, in Long Island City. Um, we the Long Island City Partnership recently commissioned some public art uh, that was dog themed because we were seeing the the growing number of dog related businesses and also dog ownership. Um, and also in a lot of the residential buildings, the residential towers have amenities for dogs. Um, and so what we started noticing this trend and as we did more research, we found that there were 30 businesses that had that are had, had have opened somewhat recently um, that are dog related. So that's anything from veterinarians to um, pet stores or doggy daycares. And so, uh, and people really love their dogs. So we want to really promote Long Island City as a dog friendly location. Neil, one more quick question from Queens. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. I've noticed that too. And so, I mean, what makes Long Island City um, such an attractive place for people to live now? So a lot of people don't know exactly where Long Island City is, but it's very central locate, centrally located in New York City. So it's really the most central location in the five boroughs. But we're also only one stop away from Midtown Manhattan. And so um, 
even though we have so much uh, industry here and, and places of employment here in Long Island City, if people are commuting to Manhattan, it's a really easy commute. It's easy to get around to Brooklyn or the other boroughs. Um, so our number one benefit is really our location and the ease of transportation. Um, and but we also have a lot of culture here. We have MoMA PS1. We have the Sculpture Center, a lot of arts institutions. Um, we have great food, um, great open space, and the waterfront is just really breathtaking and beautiful. Uh, so and and so it's it's a great place for people to live. Um, and we have a lot of families, a lot of dogs. Um, so it's a very family friendly neighborhood. And a lot of businesses. Right. And, uh... You're doing great without Amazon. Congratulations to everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much.